Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your daily update for today, October 26th, 2020. Well, we're now eight days from the election, and this has been a tumultuous period, a tumultuous campaign, uh, in which on the one side you have the continued insistence of those people who have been out to get rid of Donald Trump, that there's Russian intervention, uh, that the situation uh, with the coronavirus is the fault of Donald Trump, uh, the, the attacks on his taxes, on, on virtually everything, but a complete cover-up by the mainstream media, a censorship of the story that's emerging of Joe Biden and the Biden crime family. Now, I think it's important then to step back for a second before you think about what you're going to do in these next eight days, and listen to something that Helga Zeppelin said a couple days ago in her assessment of where things stand. What Helga said is, quote, will the U.S. remain a republic and return to the idea of the founding fathers, that it's a constitutional republic? Or is it going to be an empire basically run on the special relationship between the United States and Great Britain as the de facto British empire, unipolar empire, unquote. Let these words sink in. This should have a special meaning to Americans who, if assuming you understand what our tradition is about. The whole of American history has been a battle between those on the one side who were committed to the idea of the freedom of the individual to act in a sovereign republic for the general welfare of the whole society as opposed to a British empire which is run by the privileged few on behalf of the privileged few and for whom everyone else becomes a useless eater. The Malthusian idea, which still to this day dominates the thinking of the elite in the British empire and their co-thinkers from Wall Street uh, and Brussels. Now, the, the American Revolution uh, and the process of its constitution was a turning point for human history because it set forward an ideal which we have not always lived up to. In fact, it's been imperfectly lived up to, but when we've gotten it right, the United States has demonstrated the progress that, that can come when human creativity is applied to the productive process for the good of all. Now, unfortunately, we've been at war with the British Empire uh, that has continued since the American Revolution and the War of 1812. The Civil War, the British were very much involved in promoting the Confederacy as a way of destroying the United States. After the Civil War, as the American system began to spread to countries like Germany, France, Japan, Russia, this was seen as an existential threat to the British Empire, which depended on the Royal Navy and the control over global trade to continue to loot the rest of the world. The United States was the enemy at that point for the British Empire. And the British used a doctrine called geopolitics, which is basically a modern upgrade of a divide and conquer policy. Pit one against the other, north against south, east against west, this religion against that religion, the idea of the clash of civilizations. That's what the British have used. And in the beginning of the 20th century, that's what led to World War I. Uh, it was not an assassination in Sarajevo, although that was a trigger, but it was British manipulation of the relationship between Germany, France, and Russia in particular, and British operations in the Middle East, which included eventually the creation of the State of Israel and the uh, dynasty of the Saudis over the Arabian Peninsula, that's what the British have done, and, and these, the two world wars were a direct result of the manipulation by the British of the European nations and then also of the United States. Now, the fact is that after the war, there was a conception that Franklin Roosevelt had about the United States working not for the British Empire, but for American sovereign interests, which included cooperative, friendly relationships with all nations to eliminate poverty, to eliminate hunger, and to develop a community of principle among nations. Unfortunately, Franklin Roosevelt died, and the Cold War came into being. The Cold War was another example of a British manipulation working through networks largely 
from New York financial interests tied to the Dulles brothers, the Harrimans, and others to return the United States to the junior partner of the British Empire. And the result has been not just the Cold War, not just the insanity of mutual and assured destruction, and not just the assassination of John F. Kennedy, which was a product of this British deployment, but it also was every single war that we've been in since that time, with Vietnam up through the current round of 20-year wars that are going on in the Middle East. Similarly, the American system was attacked. The idea of a productive economy, not a consumer economy, but an emphasis on credit for production as the way in which you improve the living standards of the whole population. Coming out of World War II, we had a phenomenon that was unrivaled in the world until recently of developing a relatively comfortable middle class which was capable of not only buying a home and raising a family, but of having a vision for the future that all will be better uh, if we continue in this way. That really was shattered after the assassination of Kennedy with the shutdown of the space program, the cutback on investment in uh, real physical production, the launching of the Green Movement, and then after 1971, the end of the Bretton Woods system with a gold reserve currency and a fixed exchange rate. The result is that you had a speculative casino economy set up globally that benefited or created billionaires and was for their exclusive benefit while collapsing the middle class. The idea of an economy that benefits only the few is completely antithetical to the tradition of the American Revolution. Since 1971, Lyndon LaRouche raised the banner of the American system of physical economy. He was working for a period of time directly with Ronald Reagan on how a technological breakthrough in weapons development, namely beam weapons, anti-missile defense, could revolutionize the whole economy. Uh, he repeatedly warned after Reagan of the bubbles, the, the stock bubble of 87, the Asia bubble, the, the LTCM crisis, the dot-com bubble, the 2008 stock collapse and, and mortgage-backed security collapse, all the way up to today, where instead of correcting the errors of post-1971, we doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on them, creating a speculative bubble based on unsustainable debt where the wealthy can make money from trading that debt but while all the rest of us are sitting in a collapsing economy, destroyed infrastructure with very little hope for the future. Now, the Trump election in 2016 was a reflection of Americans saying enough is enough, enough of war, enough of bailouts, enough of Wall Street. Unfortunately, President Trump's agenda is still very much unfinished, largely because of the attacks on him by the allies of the British system in the United States, including the Obama intelligence community, including the Democratic Party, some in the Republican Party, the neocons and, and neoliberals, and also the media. And so instead of having a decisive break with what was the Bush, the two Bushes, and the Clinton and Obama policies, we've, had a, we've been trapped inside that bubble of a bubble economy and wars. Now we see where we sit today, where you have endless wars and continuing regime change uh, policy, which is what Biden is promising he will do. He's not saying he's going to do it, but that's what he did. That's his whole career. A protection of Wall Street and the bubbles, not of the American people. Huge and growing military budgets, unsustainable debt. We now have a pandemic. We have a world famine that could take as many as 30 million lives this year and was totally preventable. And we have the collapse of the real economy. And what do we see coming from the Democrats, from the Biden campaign, from the city of London, from Wall Street? A defense of a collapsed system. Now, in the presentation I quoted from earlier from Mrs. LaRouche, here's how she concluded it. She said, while they're defending this dead system, quote, People are being tested. War or peace, starvation or development. It depends on people choosing to act for the common good, unquote. 
And so I conclude this update today on the election coming up by asking, will you join with us to defend the tradition of the U.S. Constitution of a sovereign republic acting in the interests of all? And if so, you have eight days in which to act like an American patriot and organize your fellow citizens working with us at LaRouche Pack. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow. Share this video. Go to LaRouchePack.com to get supporting material out to your networks and organize like hell. Thanks, and I'll see you later.